party. And now we're waiting. <laughs> waiting for everybody. <laughs> she ran away. My IT department ran away. Hey, everybody. When you come over, you know what I'm eating? I'm eating espresso beans covered in chocolate. Hey, everybody, come on on board. Let me know where you're watching from. It's always fun to see crazy time zones. Uh, give me some hellos and some waves and tell me where you're watching from. Well, let me turn on the comments over here on Facebook and other places. Okay, I think those comments are on now. Um, hello from Miami, Florida. Always happy to have you here. Hi, Mamby Morgan. Thank you for the kind things you're saying. Oh, hello, Arizona. Marlene from Arizona. <gasps> you're from Russia. Miss Cus 6769. Um, hi, Phoenix. Hello, Monterey, California. How are you? Hello, Sydney, Australia. You're here as well. Um, who else do we have? Phoenix, Arizona. So it's like an hour later, right? If it's six o'clock here, it's seven there. Um, hello, everybody. You see me squinting? up at Instagram, you know, I have the two cameras, right? So here's Facebook, YouTube, wherever, all those places. Uh, hello from Vancouver Island. Okay, so Cheryl, I lived in Victoria once and for four years in middle school. It was so beautiful. We lived in Saanich. I think I went to Lakeview Elementary. And um, my favorite place to go in the world is Shawnigan Lake. So there you go. Hello, Brian from Newport News. Newport News, Virginia, not Newport Beach, California. Mm. Hi, Maggie from Tennessee. Um, Kelly's here from Orange County, local. Hello, Pasadena, how are you? Hi, Ventura County, how are you? San Diego, nice to see you, Newport News. Uh, anybody have any uh, relationship questions? There are a couple that people have sent me that I'm going to go into. Um, yeah, I know, it's been a year, Joey. It's been a year. I know that because very soon, StreamYard is going to bill me again because I paid for a year thinking, oh, I'll just pay for this and see if it's worth it. Well, it has been more than worth it. Another from Australia, hello. Did you know my Aussie friends who are watching on next week, I'm being interviewed by 60 Minutes Australia because of another big investigation they're doing having to do with me too. You know that stuff, you've been reading it, right? Uh, the new thing going on in Paris. So um, I will let you know my Aussie friends when it's going to air. Uh, thank you. Love my hair color. Okay. So here's the deal about the hair. When you get to the old age that I am, now you should know that my whole family gets put in the coffin with a full head of hair. We do not bald. We do not lose hair. My nephews would argue, but their genes came from somewhere else, not on our side. And hi from New York. How are you, Bianca? Uh, hi from Thousand Oaks. And so unfortunately we all go gray very early in my twenties. My hairdresser was coloring gray. So here I am so much later. And so she told me, that she always wants to keep my roots dark because it looks more natural and more youthful. So I keep darkening my roots. So thank you, Jen, for the uh, nice compliment. Uh, okay. Hello. Who else we got? Any questions? Relationship questions. We're here to talk about love and how love has nothing to do with it. It's all about attachment and attachment style and attachment theory and that we all have this model for love in our heads that operates out of our consciousness for many of us and can cause us a lot of anxiety. And I have been always obsessed with the science of love because it's the whole reason for living, truthfully. We are born, put on this planet to reproduce. And um, somebody said, if someone's browsing through dating sites but doesn't have an actual profile, is that considered cheating? Uh, well, it depends. Are you browsing with your mate? So you are like sort of fantasizing together Hmm. Or are you thinking of stepping out? I mean, the question is, what are the rules that have been set up by both partners in the relationship? Um, you know, we all have backup mates. We all have some people we send private messages to. And um, that's just human nature. Now, if they're literally, you've told them, no, I don't like you looking through other people's dating profile, it sounds like you're not really here. I mean, the question is, is how to get them committed to this, right? And to talk to about intimacy, your feelings, their feelings about this is far more important than the actual behavior. Um, so she, he was alone browsing by himself. And you know this because, how'd you find out, I wonder? 
You caught him over his shoulder, peeking. We all look, but does that mean? Wait, can you browse on a dating site without having a profile? Do they let you see some? I don't know that they do. Maybe he's got a profile there and he told you he doesn't. Just saying. Maggie asked me, um, somebody asked me, Rhonda said, is there anywhere I can get a copy of your interview from the Marie show? I've never been able to find it on YouTube or anywhere. I think it's so valuable. Um, I don't know which Marie show. You'll have to, Rhonda, you'll have to elaborate on that. Maggie, what do you think of an age difference of more than 10 years? I'm older than 10 years than my man. Well, if you're both over 18, I guess it's okay. I mean, what's 10 years once you're over 30? It really, you know, you're, the prefrontal cortex is fully developed at the age of 25. I feel it's a little funky just to me because my knowledge of a psychologist, as a psychologist, that, um, that, you know, somebody might be a 21-year-old girl and a 35 year old man, that is not fair power advantage because she's not a fully developed prefrontal cortex. Um, uh, I felt I wasn't enough when I caught him doing that. We were exclusive. Well, I guess the question is to talk about your feelings with him, Marilyn, just talk to him, tell him your feelings. And if he's not able to hear and accept your feelings and console you and tell you I'm sorry, baby, I didn't mean to feel that way. Then maybe this is not the supportive relationship that you need. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, any thoughts on doing a regular weekday show on KFI? I don't think that's my decision. I think that's our program director, Robin Bertolucci, who's a fabulous program director and she knows all. So if you think I should be on Monday to Friday on KFI, you might as well write to Robin Bertolucci at iHeartMedia.com and tell her. Um, and so um, it was about a book you had written about a study of what happens in relationships when you have two. Oh, the book was called The 30 Day Love Detox. And do you mean Marie Osmond's show, Rhonda? I don't know what show you mean. Maybe it's Marie Osmond. I don't know. I think so. I don't know where that tape is. I know I was on it. Um, okay. Any more questions about relationships? I know somebody, uh, one I wanted to answer that came on Instagram was somebody who had a very close friendship with somebody used the L word, the love word. He's a man. She's a woman. Apparently scared her off, rattled her, and she's now kind of not responding and ghosting her. So he asked me when he should reach out to her. And the answer is, if she's not responding to you, it means you already reached out to her. So reaching out to her again is not the thing to do, okay? Um, just let it go. You might've lost a friendship by trying to get yourself out of the friend zone by using the L word. Plus you mentioned that you're a continent away and you haven't seen her because of travel things for a year. This isn't a relationship. It's a fantasy in both your heads or at least one of your heads. Uh, somebody said, I'm open to dating, but as a single father, that want seems selfish and inappropriate. No, it is not selfish and inappropriate single father. It is selfish and inappropriate if you bring your kids on your dates or if you put your dates first and your kids second. It is selfish and inappropriate if you have a revolving door of parental figures around your kids. But if you have partial custody and you're able on your days off to go and receive the care that you deserve from another loving adult, then why not? That is not selfish. Uh, I have a man friend who doesn't understand. I only like him as a friend. He's having a hard time accepting. I don't want to cut off our friendship. It's hard. Okay, so here's the thing. You also can't use and abuse somebody in the friend zone if they have laid it out there. I do think that some responsibility lies on women who keep men in the friend zone and use them for all the wonderful tasks that they do in our lives. Um, you just have to keep reasserting your boundaries, keep being honest. And if he's moping around, it's not going to be a fun, fun friendship. He's always hoping. But I, I do promise you, just like Steve Harvey says, if there's a man and he's your friend, he's hoping to date you. If he's a heterosexual man and you're a heterosexual woman and he's hanging around, he's hoping to date you at some point. He's hoping to have a love relationship with you. Uh... Hmm. What else we got? Any more questions? I know it's hard. It is hard. 
you don't have to cut off the friendship. You just have to have clear boundaries and keep reasserting them until either he leaves or it becomes so impossible to deal with that you end up cutting it off because of that. It's not a worthy friendship anymore. Uh, any more relationship questions? You know what I'm doing tonight? I am going to, I'm drinking kombucha, by the way, a little kombucha, because you know me and my probiotics for my gut health. And then I'm going to do uh, Legree Pilates tonight. I booked a seven o'clock class because these classes are so exhausting to me that I just want to go to sleep afterwards. So I thought, why do it in the morning and be tired all day? I'll work out at night and I'll go right to sleep afterwards. Um, thank you, Rhonda, for the kind words. Thank you, very pe nice people online for kind words. You know, I had a sad thing happen to me. I don't know if you guys follow Midwin Charles. She is a, a former colleague of mine from CNN. Uh, we used to do Don Lemon show together and Dr. Drew's show together. And um, she lived in New York, but when our, so we'd see each other on screens, but then when she'd come to LA, we would have lunch sometimes. And she was a very, very bright legal analyst. And she did a live stream just like I do every Friday. She called hers happy hour. She always had a little glass of wine and she would talk about all the news of the week. She was very much a civil rights activist. Um, and so last Friday she posted on Instagram, hey, I'm feeling a little under the weather or whatever, I'm feeling a little sick. Um, we'll do it next week kind of thing. And then today her family posted that she had passed away. And we don't know why or how. Um, and so I've been feeling in a funk all day today because when a peer dies, a peer who's 10 years younger, all of a sudden you got to worry. Um, anyway, we will wait to see our thoughts and condolences certainly go out to her family. Someone asked me, do you think it is a very valid reason to leave someone for bad sex? I mean, personally, compatibility is more important, isn't it? Well, sexual compatibility is important too, and it is possible to turn bad sex into good sex if the person is open to having good sexual communication and if they are a sensuous person. I mean, sometimes you can be a really bad match because somebody likes to be touched and touch and the other person doesn't. So um, it's, it's not a bad reason. I mean, if you've only tried them out once, give it a chance, try talking. Um, you can go to a sex therapist. If the rest of the relationship is great, then you can work on that aspect. Um, what do I think about an engaged man still looking at women's pictures on social media? Women, men always look, okay? They're visually wired. If they don't look, you got a problem. You're worried about them. Uh, really, the question isn't about the man. It's about you and your feelings of being able to tolerate or is he doing it to try to upset you and make you jealous. There's something going on maybe in the attachment there, um, but men will always look. And I, I know that some women take their boyfriend's cell phones when they're sleeping and they open their Instagram and they start following all these cat videos. So then Instagram chooses to provide them with that. The problem is if they follow one Instagram model, then Instagram gives them millions of Instagram models. Uh, Excellent question, Mary Lynn. Is it wrong to be single? How do you answer it when people ask you why and how are you single? It is the most insulting question because it assumes that you are a pretty product on a shelf that somebody hasn't chosen. Not that you are a human being who makes your own choices for your own life, right? That's why it's an obnoxious question. Um, first of all, you should tell them that right now we have more unmarried adults in the uh, American culture, in our population than married adults. So you basically say, I am part of the majority and I've chosen to be single at this stage of my life. And you know, I know they think it's like a compliment, like, how are you single? People said to that me that all those years with my kids. And I used to say, actually, I'm not single. I'm attached to my kids. I'm in relationships with two people that's eating up a lot of my time and my heart is there too. So uh, guys didn't get it, but women got it. Um, someone asked me, here I can put some of these questions up now. Some people go from one relationship. Are some people not capable, of, go from one, you mean from relationship to relationship? Are some people capable of loving or not loving someone for years? 
I'm not clear on the question, but basically if you mean somebody frequently has lots of new relationships, then they have problems with long-term intimacy maybe, and that maybe should be worked out. Uh, what else do we have? Does my boyfriend watch the NHL? No, he watches Formula One and he watches baseball. He's crazy about baseball and Formula One, which means we're up very, very early in the morning to watch Formula One. Uh, any more questions? Can you explain the psychology behind people who get so stuck on their ex they can't move on? Yes. So this is an anxious attachment disorder, right? You're attached to something who can't love you back. And it is not love. It is longing. It is being in love with the feeling of longing. And so knowing how to have someone with a secure attachment style still feels loss and weepiness and gets over it and then has a strong sense of self and knows that they are lovable and knows that they will find somebody else. But being obsessed with your ex and trust me, I've been there, uh, is part of an anxious attachment. Somebody asked me advice for an ambivalent attachment. Tolerate intimacy and don't create drama and push them away when intimacy shows up. Um, uh, one thing that you can do to learn how to have a secure attachment style. Well, you can't do it alone. You have to do it in relationship with somebody. Learn to tolerate intimacy. Learn to that it's okay to see or be seen by somebody. That, you know, my best definition of intimacy is being able to see the flaws in your partner and still love them back. But more importantly, knowing that they can see the flaws in you and you still loving yourself, that it's okay. How do I differentiate obsession from love? Well, it's an obsession if it's causing dysfunction in your life and it's not welcomed by the other, right? So if it's if you're wasting so much time and energy and money and it's affecting your work life and your other relationships, that's an obsession. And if the person is not, if it's unrequited, then you're obsessed, not in love. Um, what do I mean tolerate intimacy? It means understand that when somebody shows the most vulnerable, authentic, and sometimes not pretty of their emotional selves, that you can tolerate seeing that and support it. And you can tolerate that other people can see that in you. Um, what else do we got here? Uh, anything, any other questions about relationships? I'm not gonna be on too long tonight because I really wanna go to this Legree Pilates class. Uh, I'm looking for questions about relationships. If we have any more, I'll be happy to answer them. Can you have a long-term relationship with someone who has different religious beliefs, but the beliefs are respected? Of course you can. You know, there are inter-religious households and families all the time. Um, the issue is how you're gonna raise the kids or whether you raise them with both, which is possible too. You know what? Most religions are pretty similar. They preach family values, they preach clean living, they preach loyalty, they preach honesty. And so you can have two religions using different languages to teach the same thing, the moral teaching. Uh, oh. Maura said, how about this? I still love my ex-wife, hoping we will get back together, but she moved on. I keep thinking she would see that I'm still there. I'm sorry. You've got to move on. If you're completely divorced and she's an ex, you can't be in love with hope, right? You can't be in love with hope. I know. It's so hard. You know, I meet so many people, especially on these live streams, who are, you know, just filled with such feelings of loss. And it reminds me how relationships are so important for our mental health. And yes, the game is to find a mate who meets you at the same level. Sophie is asking, is it safe to marry an ex-sex addict? Well, I don't think sex addiction actually is a diagnosis in the DSM, as far as I know. It's more like a compulsion. 
But I guess the question is, can the two of you go to therapy and discuss what caused that compulsion? What need was not being met? And can you and your relationship with them fulfill that need? It's not about sex, by the way. It never is. It's about other stuff. Um, oh, Akshay, that's a really good question. Wendy, what is one regret you have about your relationships that young people can learn from? This is such a good question, Akshay. Thank you for putting it. It is that I stayed in an unrequited love relationship with my own anxious attachment for a decade. I'm really lucky because I got in at the 11th hour of my fertility window and ended up having babies at the age of 36 and 41 without problems. But this is not normal, right? The prime biological age for a woman to have babies is in her 20s. Now, that's not our cultural age, right? Because women are busy in school and building their careers. Um, but I spent 10 years longing for somebody who couldn't love me back in the same way. And I mean, he could love his version of love, but it was never enough for me. So what he was for me is not his fault. He was a convenient object for me to put my anxious attachment on. And once I got into therapy and once I saw my patterns, once I understood what I did, look, I remember one time, just to tell you that we've all been there. I was a famous television host. I was beautiful. I had a glam squad around me, hair, makeup, wardrobe, whenever I went anywhere. And this dude stood me up for midnight mass on Christmas Eve, the first Christmas after both my parents had died. Normally I would have gone and spent time with family, but there was no family. And I cried and cried in a bathtub the next day on Christmas day. And I was so sad and I called him and I said, why do you do this to me? Why, when you promise you'll be there and then you're not there, why do you hurt me this way? And he said the most stone cold, honest thing that a girl could wish for. And he said, mm, because you let me. Yeah, he was looking for me to have boundaries. And the answer was, I had no boundaries. I was so busy wanting him to love me that I didn't have boundaries and I didn't love myself. So once I learned, yes, I had a baby at 41 and oh, and your mom had it at 43. That's right. Do you want to see my baby? Hey, baby, Jonesy, come here. They want to see who's the baby that I had at 41. This is a baby I had at 41. Hi. Now she's, uh, how old are you? I'm 17. She's 17 now. She's my littlest one. We're going to go to Pilates together in a few minutes. So that's why she's here. Uh, thank you, Jones. <laughs> she's my IT department too. Um, all righty. If there is nothing more. Oh, thank you, Morris. That's sweet. Um, I wish you all well. I wish you happiness and health. And please, because I told you the story of having lost a colleague today. It is a reminder to all of us that any day could be our last. Any day could be the last of our friends or family. So please reach out to somebody you love tonight and just remind them, somebody you've taken for granted, a friend, a colleague, uh, somebody in a relationship, just reach out and say you love them because this is all we have. We have each other. It's a very short life. We come into this world alone. We die alone. And hopefully in between, we have people around to support us and help us through. Thank you for being with me. I try to be here every Wednesday at six o'clock. Next Wednesday, I think I have a flight on this next Wednesday. Maybe I'll do it another time. Um, it's always great to see everybody. And um, you can always listen to the, oh, I have to put my banner up. I forgot, I forgot my banner. There we go. The Dr. Wendy Walsh Show on KFI AM 640 Los Angeles. You can listen anywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Uh, if you miss it on Sundays from four to six, then the show is always on the app at different times. Thank you for the kind things you're saying. It's very sweet of you. It really means a lot. I mean, it's like the kindness of strangers sometimes is all we have, especially when we're alone during COVID. Well, I'm not. I got 17 year old there. All right. I love you all. Have a nice evening. Bye. <laughs>